Welcome back to Two Ski Geeks. It's your boy, Will Call. Happy to be with you on today. It's the 23rd of January, uh, 2023. Uh, but let's uh, talk about books. The main purpose and gist of this, uh, of this uh, show is to today uh, go over books that were from last week, either from eBay, uh, Hip Comics. And if you guys don't know, get yourself the Hip Comics Act. Uh, application. Uh, you can also find it on the web, of course, but get yourself the Hip Comics uh, application or app because there are great auctions out there that can be had uh, that you can purchase books all the time from a lot of a ton of different shops that participate on Hip Comics. And I'll put some of the information into the comments for you guys, <clears throat> but you definitely don't want to miss out on Hip Comics. Uh, and so I've got some great books from an auction that uh, from Hip Comics. And then finally, books that I picked up last week from the local comic book store. And so um, other thing, I hope you really guys, you hope you guys really enjoyed last episode's epi uh, interview with Philip Kennedy Johnson, the author and writer of Action Comics, Alien, uh, Green Lantern, Emerald Dawn, James Bond. Uh, what was it? The Last Sons. Uh, I, so many different books. But anyway, catch our watch the last uh, interview, please, with Philip Kennedy Johnson. And we all had a great time interviewing him. And thank you again, Mr. Kennedy Johnson, for um, Philip Kennedy Johnson, for uh, taking your time uh, from your writing and your family to spend time with us last week. We truly had a great time with you. Okay, and so, and then the last portion of the show we'll do is just called Great Reads, because one of the one of our viewers, he asked about uh, what things we can do so far as recommending Great Reads. So we'll wrap up the show with a Great Read. And so without further delay, I'm going to take the camera off my face and switch it to books, again, that I picked up uh, from last week. And so let's begin with the party. Right now, changing down to this book here. So this book here is Strange Academy Finals, number one. It's a variant. It is with Dormammu's son, Doyle Dormammu. It's a cover of pick. It's not a first cover appearance, but it's a solo cover, solo cover appearance of Doyle Dormammu. And uh, this Strange Academy's finals, it is a uh, I guess it's like the next volume to the first Strange Academy that came started out two years ago in 2020, almost almost now three, almost three years ago. But um, but so now this is the spinoff from Strange Academy and they're in their finals. So I guess they're growing up and they're getting ready to move uh, through their academic year to the finals. So that's one of that one book that I picked up. Uh, another great book we I picked up is this Batman Joker number one. And come on into the focus now. Here we go. There we go. I love it. All right. So this is a Jim Lee cover on this Batman, the Joker, Batman and Joker, the Deadly Duo. This is book number two of the series. And I love this, uh, this Jim Lee cover. Uh, the Joker depiction is awesome. Uh, but the madness and the goodness doesn't stop there. So here we go. Let's get ready to knock your socks off with another very, but the, on, another artist that we've talked about, and we'll talk about him later on in the show too, uh, with this book here. And I love this cover here by Jason Sean Alexander of the Joker. Uh, smashing it. I mean, the, the, the craziness. And, and if you guys know, we've talked about Jason Sean Alexander when we talked about the Rodney Barnes show. And he is the artist on Philadelphia and Nita Hall's Nightmare blog. He's also done work on Spawn. He also did a book on his own for Image called The Empty Zone. Uh, Jason Sean Alexander is a bad boy when it comes to horror. So um, loving this cover here by Jason Sean. And, but the goodness isn't it doesn't end there. So let's go one more with his depiction of Batman. Another, another just yeah, knocks it up the park. 
uh, uh, with this picture of this uh, rendering of Batman for the same book, Batman Deadly Joker, book number two. So there are three covers out there that I wanted for uh, Batman uh, Joker Deadly Duo. And as you see from the label there at the top uh, top right corner there, I bought these from My Comic Shop. So they came in mail call. And my Comic Shop is an also, an also, also a great resource for buying comic books. Uh, my one word, mycomicshop.com, as you see right there. They get your books to you very quickly. I think I ordered those books the Saturday before last, and they came in on like Tuesday. They're very prompt. Okay, so another Strange Academy book here uh, because I love all things voodoo. And uh, so I wanted to get this cover here uh, for Strange Academy number four. It's a variant, and I don't know the name of this character. I'll have to put that into the comments as well or into the subtitles for this uh, show. But I, this is not my first cover. This is not my first copy of it. This is an Art Adams, an Arthur Adams or Art Adams cover. Uh, I love this cover here, and I had to get it. I loved it so much. Had to do it twice. It was so nice. Had to do it twice. So I had to get it more than once. And like I said, uh, and I believe this is probably like my third cover of this book. All righty. So another book that came in. Uh, the last book was an e was an eBay book, and so was this one. Uh, this uh, symbiote Spider Man Alien Reality. Uh, yeah, I had to get this one uh, for the the Spider Verse, of course, with a Doctor Strange Spider Man. Uh, you you just have I just had to get it. You just don't let uh, some of these oddball pairings of, of characters where uh, Spider-Man becomes Doctor Strange, the uh, Sorcerer Supreme. And so, yeah, just, uh, yeah, you just can't sleep on that. And this is my, I have three copies of this one as well. I might even have four, but for sure uh, on eBay, I also bought two other copies that came in much like that Strange Academy. So uh, this is the third copy of the book that I have. Okay, so that takes care of the eBay books. Now let's talk about hip comics. And again, get yourself that app because here we go. Here's the fun. Uh, this classic cover of Hal Jordan when he loses his mind uh, as he gets ready to become Parallax and, uh, and gives over to fear. And this is, as some people call it, the goat. <laughs> or someone people's because this is long before Tom Brady uh, or that term the goat. Uh, but I want to. There we go. Number 49, uh, Green Lantern. And again, this is when he lost his mind. This is one of the most famous covers of all time uh, with Green Lantern and Hal Jordan as he gets ready to lose his mind and uh, kills many Green Lanterns uh, to get those rings, as you can see. Uh, so um, a great read, a great cover. Ron Mars was the writer on this a long while back. I don't know who the artist is, but Ron Mars, M-A-R-Z. He's also done a lot of stuff on um, Silver Surfer Volume 2 that came out in the late 80s. So uh, Ron Mars is a hell of a writer, been doing it for a long time. Okay, next book to focus on. Man, these came in from Quality Comics. The next few books were still on Hip Comics, the auction site, but Quality Comics is a, is one of the vendors on Hip Comics, uh, and they had an auction, a great auction. And these books I bought, thank you, Quality Comics, at quite a steal, uh, probably about four, three, three to five bucks a pop. And these are in beautiful shape. I love the Demon, Jack Kirby goodness, awesomeness. Uh, so this is the demon, number 14, uh, with the witch boy and his crazy cat. And then we've got the demon, number nine. Uh, again, just Kirby excellence. And I ain't finished yet. So here we go. Demon, number 10. 
All right, that's it for the demon books. But we're still in quality comics, still in the auction, same auction. Stand by because I'm changing titles. So here we go. Get ready to have your socks knocked. And even though it's not in the greatest shape, if you guys don't know, Fantastic Four comics, the value of them are is exploding. Uh, so if you get Fantastic Four books, even if they're not in the best of shape, I recommend you try to get those. Uh, this is Fantastic Four number 40. Come on, focus. Come on in. I need to follow the picture. All righty. Uh, Fantastic Four number 40. Again, not in the best of shape. It's got a big chip out of the top, but that's okay. And then we've got Fantastic Four number 79. And this was in pretty doggone good shape. Yes, it's got some, some white around there and some, some stress marks that break color, but it's still great. And you got this great Ben Grimm uh, cover. And of course, these are still Jack Kirby. I haven't, we, let's, uh, let's not say that uh, we got up, we got off the Jack Kirby tra train because these are all Jack Kirby covers. And of course, Stan Lee was the writer. And probably about this time, uh, Stan was probably giving a lot or allowing a lot more writing to go to Jack Kirby than Stan was doing himself at the time. But regardless of that, Fantastic Four, number 86. And still looks good. Yeah, there are breaks and stuff on the spine or whatever, but still, I highly recommend getting these old Fantastic Four books. My goal is to have every single book from one to 100. That is my ultimate goal, to have one through 100 of every single book in the Fantastic Four. I'm probably about halfway there, maybe a little bit more than halfway there. But uh, that's my goal. Uh, of course, the first 10, yeah, pricey. Get ready to pay. But regardless of that, here we go. A king size, Fantastic Four, number 10. And you imagine this, all the good big, this big king size story for 35 cents back in the day? Man. Okay, so anyway, the wedding of Sue and Reed, as you see, uh, with all the villains going gangbusters to try to break up the wedding. Uh, but yeah used to love these uh, huge amount of villainous uh, appearances in one book that the Fantastic Four used to go to go crazy with and fight against these, all these villains that would show up in one book at one time. But uh, yeah, love this. And I love to have, I love having these Fantastic Four books that are now valuable. And I did not pay a lot. Thank you again, Quality Comics. Uh, let's see here. Then we've got Daredevil, number 156. This is a Frank Miller book. It's not Frank's first, but it's one of his early books when he took over the writing on Daredevil. And uh, so this is 156 on Daredevil here. And are you gonna show in? There we go. All righty. And then we've got an earlier Daredevil. Number 145, and I love the owl. Um, <laughs> those books with uh, Daredevil and the owl and even Spider-Man and the owl, man, those are great books to have and to read. The stories were always so very good uh, with the owl. Another one of my favorite characters was Dr. Uh, Mr. Hyde, Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, Mr. Hyde, really in particular, uh, against Spider-Man and or Daredevil. I sadly don't have any of those books in this auction, but I will be getting some. Uh, for Daredevil when he faces off against Hyde, but this is against the Owl, and it's just as good as to me uh, as 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 the Hyde books as well. So now we've got um, moving through quickly. Doctor Strange, Master of the Mystic Arts, number four, great cover. The only book of this series that I'm missing is number one. I don't have number one. I have two, three, and now four. Sadly, it's got a big little creak, uh, crease down the middle, down the side of, I'm sorry, down the corner of the book. But otherwise, it's still a beautiful book. Sadly, it breaks the cover, it breaks the color. Uh, so, of course, when it comes to grading, that you know, it decreases the value of the book and the demand of the book. But it's okay. It's still otherwise in great shape. And again, I did not pay a lot for these books. Uh, and then we've got right here, 
Doctor Strange. This one came out in the 80s. And this one right here, as you can tell, if you're not familiar, this is a throwback to the Fantastic Four's first appearance of Rama Tut. And Rama Tut was the precursor to Kang the Conqueror. So back in the day, I think it was Fantastic Four, I want to say number 13. No, 13 is, a, is the Watcher. I can't remember. I also have to put it in the subtitles is when uh, the first appearance of Rama Tut. And I also have a picture of it from the Fantastic Four back in the 60s. But uh, this, is a, this is a throwback where it's strange as time traveling to that same period when the Fantastic Four met Rama Tut back in the day. Therefore, the throwback or the homage cover uh, in Doctor Strange for Rama Tut and the Fantastic Four. Uh, so love having this as well. And as you see from when I put these things, these things in the comments, you're going to see how much and why this is so important, in particular with Kang the Conqueror coming out in the Quantum Mania, Ant-Man Ant and the Wasp Quantum Mania, uh, within a few short weeks. Okay, another treasure that I found on Hip Comics via Quality Comics, Doom Patrol. Man, loving Doom Patrol on HBO Max, but this cool character here. Uh, Mr. 103, he's like an elemental, just choose, chooses it to become whatever it chooses to be. Uh, uh, therefore, the Encyclopedia of Evil uh, can turn itself into whatever it chooses to as a menace to the Doom Patrol. And this is one of those Silver Age books, as you see the 12 cent uh, cover cost on this book. It's a Silver Age goodness, uh, Doom Patrol number 105. And then we've got another one. Comes back a little bit more with a little. Uh, let's see here. This is Doom Patrol 106. So yeah, 105 and then 106. This one's had a little more wear on it. Um, but that's okay. I still love this book. I still I, I needed to have this one. Uh, and of course, we have the beginning. We're talking about a uh, a story that also centers on the negative man in the Doom Patrol. And so I, I can't wait to, I got to put some my, my, my gloves on to touch this book, but I may have to ruse through these stories just a little bit and touch them and read them and get my eyeballs on them, but just very carefully uh, just to see this story and see what it's about. Or have to buy, maybe just go back and buy the, uh, the graphic novels one of these days soon as well. Hopefully they have them out there. All right. So books that came from the local comic book store. So we're getting ready to come to the end. But this is what they call a, a landmark or milestone issue. Why? Because it is the 100th issue of Nightwing. And if you guys aren't keeping track, after Dark Crisis, lately the Dark Crisis story, uh, Nightwing has taken a very central role in the DC universe. I mean, he is he has become the... Uh, I don't want to say the next Batman, but for lack of better terms, the next Batman after this dark crisis story, he is Nightwing has become the man uh, of the DC universe post dark crisis. And so this is his hundredth issue for this volume uh, that's been going on now, probably since 20, I want to say 18. And so uh, great job to DC and keeping Robin, I'm sorry, Nightwing, the first Robin, Dick Grayson, uh, relevant and important and highly valuable to the DC universe. Next one is a first appearance in Flash, uh, Miss Murder. And she is also from the dark multiverse, same as the Batman who lasts most likely. Uh, we're getting ready to see how deeply into this, uh, into uh, her character that she can be uh, somewhat related to uh, the Batman who laughs. And uh, so I'm looking forward to reading this. And uh, we've talked about the cover artist on this, and that is Taryn Clark. And as always, Taryn Clark smashes these covers. Um Every single cover that he's been on lately, I think it's he's probably been doing the cover since about seven, at least 780. 
Uh, so do yourself a favor, go find the Flash covers because they were kind of pissing me off for a little while because Flash covers were kind of ugly for a little while. But uh, I'll say maybe about 7, 780, 85, some 780 or 785 is when Torrent Clark started doing the covers and the covers have gotten much better. And those are the A covers. So, and you can save money on the A covers. They're only $3.99. Uh, the, the B covers, uh, so far as the look, no. They're just not hitting. DC, fire these art the artists on the B cover. Get yourself some better artists like you've had in the past that can match Torrent Clark's goodness. Next would be Wakanda number four. This is a first cover appearance of Tosin. Uh, and so <laughs> this book already is hitting after last week. This book is already hitting a price point of at least 15 bucks. Uh, Tosin is a is a major cut, is a major character. Uh, I can't remember what Black Panther book he came in with uh, earlier uh, in this series, because this, I'm sorry, in Black Panther, uh, the, the, the latest volume of Black Panther, I can't think of the issue and when he came into place. And I'll put that in the, I'll put that in the subtitles as well for the first appearance of Tosin. But this is a cover appearance and first cover appearance. And that's why this book is becoming much more than the cover price. And John Ridley, again, is the writer. Uh, please pay attention to John Ridley's stuff. And I'll talk about him again in the show, too. But John Ridley, killing it on Wakanda. He's also killing it in Black Panther. He's also killing it in I Am, I Am Batman. Um, John Ridley's doing it up. And I would love to get to interview him one of these days. Please, if you're watching this show, Mr. Ridley, or someone recommend, uh, interview, please. Uh, please be glad to have you on Two Ski Geeks. All righty. So, next book would be The Invincible Iron Man, number two, with uh, Riri and Tony Stark, Iron Man, or Invincible Iron Man, uh, battling out on the cover. This is a great cover. I don't know who the artist is. I'll have to put that in the in the comments as well. But yes, love this cover with Riri, uh, Iron Heart. And Iron Man squaring off on this cover. Great artwork, be beautifully done. Um, awesome. Okay, here we go. Moving through and on to this is straight cover love. <laughs> Just I love this cover on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, and this is number 136. And that's Jenica on the cover with, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the dude with the mask in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, you guys can put it in the comments. Please forgive me, um, uh, Ninja Turtles fans, for forgetting. Casey, Casey, I think. It, yeah, Casey is a character. Yeah. Yeah, sorry for that slip up in my momentary brain faux pas. Uh, but love this cover here just for cover goodness. I don't even know what's in the book. Just had to buy it for the cover. Okay, almost done. This is another hot book for the week. This Venom cover, number 15. Uh, I think it's a one for 25 variant <laughs> with Venom. Oh, I, yeah, I think it's Venom that has uh, swallowed Spider-Man, or at least it looks like it. And it's just cool as all get out. Um, yeah. I, I can't say any more than what the cover says for itself. So, yeah. Moving on. So now we're almost done. Uh, we talked about Rodney Barnes and Jason Sean Alexander earlier. This is, and if you go back and look at our shows when we interviewed Rodney Barnes, and he talked about this project that he was working on for Blackula. Uh, and I am so proud to have this in my collection. This was at the comic book store last Wednesday. And there was only one on the shelf. Uh, and, and I saw it and I had to snatch it up because that's my man. And uh, Rodney, kudos. I'm, I can't wait to read this. And Jason, I can't wait to view it. So far is the beauty of your artwork. This is, uh, this is one on my top prime to, to view and read and enjoy your goodness. Your team, you guys are a great team. Thank you for what you're doing for comics. and. Um, I'm going to move on because I got a couple more just cover loves that I just want to share with you guys. Uh, and that is one right here. 
uh, the Iron Man thing. <laughs> Just a cool, cool cover. Uh, I, I hope this iron. I hope this iron is rust proof. I hope it's got some aluminum or something in it, uh, because if he's playing around in the swamp as man thing, he's gonna have some problems moving around pretty shortly. But um, love this cover as it as it blends the uh, have uh, a blending of iron and man thing uh, in this cover, and I love that because you know man thing is a whatever with fear it burns. Whoever knows fear burns in the touch of his repulsor blast across the top. Love that, man. Love that. And so the last book, and this is not cover love. This is really, I should say, a Philip Kennedy Johnson book, uh, who we interviewed last week, which is the reason why I pulled it out. And I also pulled it out because of the dark, the dark multiverse as well. And so uh, last week when we talked about, talked to Philip, he was talking about uh, inventory books where they uh, hire writers to do extra stories when they have a hard time uh, meeting quotas for stories. And so I don't know if this is an inventory book or not, because it surely is the dark, dark multiverse, as we talked about Nightwing and Dark Crisis. And then we also talked about Flash with Miss Murder being from the dark multiverse. Uh, this one right here is a tie in to the dark, the dark multiverse. And uh, there are a bunch of books called from uh, Tales from the Dark, dark Multiverse, as this one is as well. Um, this is just one of them. And this is a story that was done by Philip Kennedy Johnson. And I'm looking forward to reading it just because uh, that's my man over there. And uh, so I'm going to take this camera off of me. Oh, no, no, I'm not. Oh, I've got one more because I said I was going to do great reads. I was going to do great reads. Yes. So great reads. Thank you, Chester, for um, recommending great reads. So I read this over this past weekend, um, and I talked about uh, John Ridley. This is a uh, story on uh, Black Lightning. And it's called the other history because it is a different, it's a, it's a different way of storytelling of the DC universe through the eyes of uh, Jefferson Pierce or Black Lightning. This story is excellent. Um, I, I, it, it's it's excellent. It's it's a, it it goes into the. Uh, upbringing of a young man, young, a young black man who uh, in, from the 70s through the early 90s and uh, as Black Lightning. And it is it's a story that's well done. It's not a quick read. Uh, I will briefly open this up and show you why I say it's not a quick read because it's a unique of telling comic book stories. As you can see, uh, you get a lot of reading with this. I mean, actually, you are going to have to read this book. It is not a quick read. And John Ridley writes his butt off in this. I mean, so, uh, and he tells the story again through the eyes of Jefferson Pierce. He also talks about John Stewart. Uh, just, and he stays relevant to the DC history. Uh, but through the eyes of Jefferson Pierce and being a, a, a young black man from the 70s to the early 90s. And um, yeah, I highly recommend it. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it, You will find this a very good read um, and a lot of introspection to be had by reading this uh, book. So put this on your reading list and your pickup list and uh, enjoy. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the camera off of me, as I said before. I'll take, I'm sorry, the camera off the table and put it back on me and get ready to wrap up this show. So uh, thank you for spending time with us today uh, with Two Ski Geeks. Again, that was my mail call. I got a ton more books that I got from uh, Hip Comics. Please, please, please do yourself a favor. Go on Hip Comics. I can't say it enough. 
uh, to get yourself some great deals on some of these auctions out there. I, you know, I, I hate to somewhat share the wealth, but I got to share the wealth if you love the hobby uh, and you somewhat want to save some money and you also want to keep the hobby going for some of these stores, some of these stores out there uh, who have a lot of books who are trying to do things outside of the eBay venue and uh, try to reduce the eBay cost and also save you some money at the same time and put great books in your hands at a reduced cost. So hip comics. Do yourself that favor. So thank you again for joining us on Two Ski Geeks. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It is an honor and a privilege to have you with us. Last thing I'm going to say, uh, we're going to have a lot more great shows coming up and interviews. We've got one coming up this week with Mr. Matt Odom. Uh, I am so excited about him. He is a golden, golden age comic book geek. And I can so what I sell for the name and sake, namesake of this show. We'll call him a golden age two ski geek for this week when we interview him. And then we'll put that out there for you guys as well. And so you're going to really enjoy uh, Matt and his wisdom and a few laughs that we're going to have together. I look, I enjoyed the conversation that John and I had with him. John Michael had with him last on this past Saturday. And uh, I think you'll enjoy him as well. So Stay too ski geeked out, too ski geeked up, and uh, I'll holler at you later. Peace.